Once I've applied my basic adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw, I'm ready to start thinking about what other adjustments I might want to take advantage of in Adobe Camera Raw to really optimize that photo when I send it into Photoshop proper. In this case, I've already applied my basic overall tonal adjustments that consisted of the whites, blacks, highlights, and shadows adjustments, and I also fine-tuned the color using temperature and tint. The next thing that I usually want to take a look at are what are referred to as the presence adjustments, and that includes clarity, vibrance, and saturation. So let's take a look at those controls in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm still in the basic set of controls, and so I'll scroll down just a little bit so that I can see the clarity, vibrance, and saturation sliders. We'll start off with clarity, which is sort of like a contrast or a sharpening adjustment. It will accentuate detail with a positive value or reduce that detail with a negative value. So then the question is, do I want to increase or decrease the degree of clarity, the degree of contrast and texture and detail in the image? And with a photo like this that already has a fair amount of detail, if anything, I think I would want to enhance that detail just a little bit. I'll go ahead and drag that clarity slider way over toward the right so that you can see the impact that it might have on a photo. And then I'll drag way over toward the left and you can see that sort of dreamlike, almost ethereal quality that it gives the image. But for this image, because there's already a good amount of detail, if anything, I would want to use a positive value. I don't want to go too overboard with this adjustment. I don't want to make the image look a little bit artificial, kind of crunchy. And so I want to moderate the adjustment a little bit. Fortunately, the clarity adjustment generally will not produce any strong halos. So it's just a matter of how much that texture is accentuated within the photo. And I think right about there looks to be pretty good. It's still a relatively strong adjustment for clarity, but I think it'll work out just fine. Next, we can take a look at vibrance and saturation, which both, you might say, in a very general way, are doing the same basic thing. We can either increase or decrease the intensity of colors in the photo. The difference is that vibrance takes a little bit more sophisticated approach. To begin with, if we were working with a portrait, a photograph of a person, the vibrance control actually mitigates that effect. It protects skin tones in the image, but also vibrance has an uneven effect on colors in the photo. Essentially, it boosts the colors that are not very saturated more than it boosts the colors that are already saturated. And so we can crank up the saturation for colors that need it without causing those colors that don't need it to be overdone. In this case, frankly, there's not much of a difference between vibrance and saturation because we have a relatively even amount of overall saturation in the photo. Saturation will apply a much more even effect, vibrance a little bit less so because it's sort of customized based on a particularly desirable output, I would say, a desirable result. So generally, I would say start with vibrance and then if you need to fine tune from there, then you might move on to saturation. I'll go ahead and increase that vibrant slider value all the way to its maximum, in fact. And you can see the colors are starting to look a little bit artificial to be sure, but still looking overall not too strong. If we had used saturation instead of vibrance, the effect would have been even stronger. I don't need much of a boost here. I just want to maybe accentuate those colors a little bit. And so maybe right about there will work out pretty well. I don't want a dramatic sense of color in this photo but I would like to draw out some of those warmer tones that were made visible in the image thanks to the warming up with the temperature slider. So right about there, I've got a value of about 20 for vibrance. I think that's giving this image a good boost, as much of a boost as this image needs in any event. Conceptually, I could then work with the saturation slider. I'll go ahead and increase that saturation slider up to its maximum, and you can see a much stronger effect than what we saw with vibrance. In some cases, I might actually use a positive value for vibrance to bring up the colors that need it, and then reduce the value to a negative value for saturation so that we're toning down the overall image. But in this case, we actually don't need that mitigating effect. And so I'll simply double click on the slider handle for the saturation slider to reset that value to its default, to its zero value or neutral value. So those presence adjustments can be relatively subtle, but still have a nice impact on the photo. In this case, just using clarity and vibrance, but in many cases also employing saturation, but simple adjustments that can really have a nice impact on an image.